So before we attempt this problem, I want you to just look at the solution of 1.332, just the previous problem to this, because our approach is going to be almost similar in both that problem and this. So just like in the previous problem, okay, first the problem. <laughs> so we are given a fluid with viscosity eta that is filled in a space between two coaxial cylinders of R1 and R2. So this is R1, this is R2, and in between that, we have a liquid. The inner cylinder is stationary while the outer one is rotated with omega 2. So inner is stationary, outer is rotated with omega 2. Now it's given the frictional force acting per unit area of a cylindrical surface is given by formula sigma is equal to eta r dou omega by tau r. So here they have given that force acting on a cylindrical surface of radius r. So when we fix the radius r, that's why they have used a term dou omega by dou r. So we are assuming r to be constant. <coughs> so let me just highlight that. So we are finding the force on a fixed radius cylindrical surface of radius r. So that's why we are writing this as eta r dou omega by dou r. Find the angular velocity as a function of radius r. So inside cylinder is stationary, outside part is moving with omega 2. So the velocity, the omega of liquid is also varying from 0 to omega 2. Now what exactly that function is that we need to find. So at a distance r, what is the omega? And second, we need to find the moment of frictional forces acting on the unit per unit length of the outer cylinder. So of course you can imagine that because the liquid is viscous, you need to use some outside torque to rotate the cylinder. So they are asking per unit length, how much torque needs to be applied? Because whatever tor torque you are externally applying, that is the same torque that is used to counter the moment of frictional forces acting per unit length on the outer cylinder. So the torque that is acting on the inside, on the on this uh, out on on this outside cylinder per unit length, how much that torque is. So first, let's find omega at a distance r. So for that, we are going to use the same approach which we used in problem previous problem. So we are going to find the tangential force. And once we find that, we can multiply that by distance r to get the torque. And therefore, torque we will get in terms of r and omega. And in previous problem, if you remember, the force was constant. If you go at any layer, here, if you go at any layer, torque will come to be constant. So we'll see how. So that's why I'm saying the previous problem and this are almost similar. So there we were dealing with force, here we are dealing with torque. So tangential force on, on outside layer of radius r of shell is given by eta a dv by dr. So area is, okay, let's simplify a bit. So velocity at a distance r is omega r. So we write this as eta a d omega r by dr. But because we are talking about this outside layer of radius r, so r is a constant, so we take r outside, so this becomes eta a r dou omega by dou r. It's the term of dou because since at given r, so r is constant. So if you take area here, we get f by a is equal to eta r dou omega by dou r, which is the same formula they have given here. So this is the force acting per unit area of a cylindrical surface of radius r. That's given by this formula. And here a is of course 2 pi r l. So that is the lateral surface of the cylinder. So 2 pi r into l. Now just like in the previous problem, the outside radius we have taken as r, but the inside radius is random. So we have not said what is the radius of inside part of the shell. Now let's write torque. So torque due to this force on the shell is given as fr, that is eta a r d omega by dr. So we put the value of a and we get this. Now, in the previous problem, momentum of each particle was constant. So momentum of complete shell was also constant. Here, 
angular momentum of each particle is constant because each particle is rotating with a constant angular velocity omega, whatever its omega is. So L of each particle is constant. So L of complete shell is constant. Therefore, on inside layer of shell 2, torque should be tau. So net torque on this shell is constant and we have seen on the outer lateral surface torque is tau. So on the inside lateral surface torque should be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. That's how total torque on the shell is going to be constant. Sorry, total torque is going to be zero and angular momentum is going to be conserved. So that is independent of inside radius. So inside radius was random, but it doesn't matter. You can go at any distance. Still at the inside radius, the torque is going to be same. Therefore, torque is independent of R and is a constant. So since we have taken the inside radius to be random, it doesn't matter. The torque is still torque, which is on the outside surface. And conversely, if you fix, if you take this R at the inside radius, and you find the value of torque that will come to be same as this. Then the outside torque, it doesn't matter what diameter, what outside diameter you take, still that's going to be torque. So on the outer surface and on the inner surface, the torque is same, but opposite in direction. So net torque is zero and angular momentum is conserved. So that's what we have done here. So in this equation, therefore, we can say torque can be treated as constant. And now we have a relation between omega and r. So we will find omega as a function of r. Let's do that. So this is our equation and treating torque as constant, we can take it out of the integral and limits of r and omega. So limits of r will take from r1 to r2 and omega goes from 0 to omega naught r1 to r2, 0 to omega naught. Then for the other limit, so we can come from r1 to r and omega will go from 0 to omega. So r1 to r and 0 to omega. So we did not write small r to r2 and omega to omega naught. That limit we did not take because then this part right side of the equation will become more complicated. So let's take the simplest of the two equations by putting simplest of the limits where we get zero in both sides. So we need omega as a function of small r and we have this term tau and L which we want to get rid of. So we'll just divide equations two and one and we'll get the value of omega. And second part, they wanted torque per unit length. So from first equation, you can see there's a term tau by L so that we can directly write to be this, which is our answer. All right.